How's everybody doing? So great to see you. Can we give another hand for the worship team? That was incredible, guys. I'll tell you what, if I could sing like Tasha, I'd get a bus and move to Nashville, Tennessee, but I can't, so I'll let her keep doing it. And they're all so talented, and they work so hard, and they've been here every service early. And I'm glad you're here. And for some reason this year, I'm more excited than ever about the cross of Jesus Christ. I believe revival is not just coming to America, it's coming to the world, because people are out of answers. They're out of answers, and sometimes you got to get desperate enough to look to the supernatural. How many of you want to be a part of that last great harvest coming in? Do you know the conversion rate has now passed the birth rate around the world? Jesus is coming back, and the church is growing and prospering. Don't believe the, the proclamations of death of the church of Jesus Christ. You know why? Because God gave us a promise. The gates of hell will never prevail against the church. And you're a part of that church. Today's the greatest day in the Christian faith. It's called Resurrection Sunday, and it's the day where God restored fellowship between you and him in a very unique way through the death and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. The scriptures say he became like a second Adam, an Adam redeeming the mistake of the first Adam where he sinned in the Garden of Eden and sin came into the bloodline of the human race. And I'm thankful for that. And and I look for a passage that might capture today the awesomeness of my Jesus, the immense power of my Jesus. And in the book of Colossians, Paul is writing to a church. He's in a Roman prison. There are false teachers trying to come into the church. And Paul is... They're trying to undercut the deity of Jesus, and and which comes from the fact that Jesus is not only the son of God, he was the exact representation of God in the earth. And the book of Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 20 in the Message Bible, it says it this way about Jesus. It says, we look at the son and we see the God who cannot be seen. We look at the sun and we see God's original purpose in everything created. For everything, absolutely everything, Paul wrote, above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. He was there before any of it came into existence and holds it all together right up until this moment. And when it comes to the church he organizes and holds it together like a head does a body he was supreme in the beginning leading the resurrection parade he is supreme in the end from beginning to end he's there towering over everything and everyone so spacious is he so roomy that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding Not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people, things, animals, atoms, get properly fixed and fit together in harmony, all because of his death, his blood poured down from the cross. That is my Jesus this morning. Somebody shout hallelujah to that. Now, the two attributes I believe God wants us to really celebrate today about Jesus is his purity and his power. He is the only human being to live a perfect life for 33 years, never committing a sin. And part of the reason he was perfect in unity is he is filled with immense power. He is not only fully man, but fully God. And when you combine perfect purity and overwhelming immense power and then embody that into someone who all things are created through and for, What do you have? You got the greatest force in the universe, the Son of God, the man Jesus Christ. Now, the way God often brings these lofty theological ideals into our limited intellect and into our spirit so we can benefit from the power of them is through symbols, through things, images in our hearts and minds. It's what Jesus told parables and Two of those images are going to help us today about the mission and person of Jesus. Purity is represented in the fact 
that Jesus was called the spotless lamb. Jesus is the spotless lamb. Now, most of us grew up in church, and so we don't think twice about phrases like the lamb of God or singing things like, Not, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. But I don't want to be presumptuous. Many of you here today didn't grow up in church. Maybe you don't regularly go to church, and these things sound very cryptic, very mysterious to you. So to understand Easter, you have to bring context. You have to go all the way back to the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God and ate from the tree of good and evil, God said, you can have everything. Everything is yours. You are a ruler over all things on my behalf. And not only that, you can have fellowship with me. But there's one thing you cannot eat from this one tree, the tree of good and evil. And you know what they did? They ate from that tree. And I imagine the immense disappointment of God. But as Christian pointed out, God knows the difference between remorse and repentance. And you know what he does in either case? He could have ran for them, but he ran to them. He ran after them, even after they made that mistake. And he found them, and when he found them, what were they doing? They were covering themselves with fig leaves. And that is how humans think. We become aware of our sin, and oftentimes we look for easy solutions to deal with it, to get rid of the sin, or more importantly, to just cover it up. We think there are plenty of fig leaves around. I can cover myself with that and fig leaves are just a way of hiding your sin or maybe ignoring your sin or just trying not to be truthful about it and maybe saying this really isn't wrong maybe it's not sin at all but I'm so thankful this morning that God made a better way than fig leaves come on church to deal with my sin and, and at first he created ways to repent through worship sacrifices that we could bring like a spotless lamb but the truth is even the best lambs even that precious little lamb that you saw coming in is not spotless even our little lamb today has imperfections like we do we try to cover those things with fig leaves God needed a spiritually spotless lamb he needed a second Adam, our true spotless lamb, and it was Jesus. His birth in the Old Testament promised us a ruler, a king that would come from Bethlehem. And, and it was heaven's glory veiled in human flesh when Jesus came to the earth. The second person of the Trinity assumed a human nature, a flesh, a form. Paul said, and he being found in human form, he humbled himself, becoming obedient even to the point of death death on a cross now why don't we have to try to cover ourselves with fig leaves and hide our sins it's because of Jesus everybody say Jesus <laughs> I want to tell you something this morning God knows about your sin and you know what he loves you anyway he loves you so much that he declared I will do what it takes not just to cover your sin. I will remove it as far as the east is from the west. It'll be gone, washed under my blood. In Romans 5, 6, chapter, verse 6, it says it this way. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely, Paul says, will anyone die for a righteous man? Therefore, a good person, well, maybe someone might possibly die, but God demonstrates his love for you in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through Jesus? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? But Paul goes on to say, the gift is not like the trespass. For if many died by the trespass of one man, how much more by God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to many. 
Nor can the gift of God be compared with the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of one man death reigned through that one man, Adam, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace, are you thankful for God's grace this morning and the gift of his righteousness, are you thankful for his righteousness this morning, reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Everybody shout Jesus this morning. It's all about him. It's all about who he is, his immense power and purity. So I thought about the spotless lamb of God, Jesus And he was dying on the cross a lot this week for you and for me. People just torturing and killing him. People he had done nothing to but speak truth and love. And I thought about his last words, being mocked, being spit upon. My last words would have been, you'll get yours. Is anybody with me this morning? But not my Jesus. His last words were, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. You see, Jesus has this amazing ability to see something that others in the same moment could have never seen, which was they really didn't understand who they were crucifying and what they were trying to stop from happening. And also to have the power and the purity to forgive in the face of unbelievable cruelty towards him. There's another phrase he uttered on the cross, and I guess in my humanity I can relate to this phrase better. Eloe, Eloe, lama sabachthani. Eloe, Eloe, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Have you ever had things happen that there's just does not seem to be a logical reason why? I think we could all answer yes to that this morning people die young spouses leave for no reason some can't conceive children that would be the greatest of parents or others have miscarriages sickness comes betrayal happens from a place that you never expected it and often leaves us grasping like Jesus in that moment on the cross where do I put this I've got no theology for this season of my life. Is it an attack? Is it a test from God? Is it just part of living in a fallen world? Is it all of the above? What is this? I want to tell you something. I take comfort today that Jesus, the spotless lamb, understands those feelings. Herod tried to kill him. Satan attacked him all his life. He tried to, people tried to push him off a cliff. His family members were murdered. He was falsely accused of being a heretic and a drunk. And people even claim the son of God was demon-possessed. And ultimately, he was beaten and hung on a cross to die, even though he was completely innocent. And amazingly, he never once complained about his circumstances. But on the cross... When his father's presence withdrew himself as he took my sin upon him, as he took your sin upon him, it was in that moment, that moment for the first time he said, Father, why have you forsaken me? And I I read that and something amazing came alive inside of me. All that stuff Jesus dealt with, he did it through the presence of his father. His father was always there. And in that moment when that presence was lifted, while the weight of my sin and your sin came upon him, he cried out, why have you forsaken me? You see, it was the presence of his father that gave Jesus strength and the ability to see past all the natural circumstance into the spiritual realm to become, not to become bitter, but go forward. And I praise God for that this morning. And for many here today on Easter Sunday, God is wanting to do a deeper work than you know and take you further than you think. But like the followers of Jesus learned that first Easter weekend, the hardest place to be is Saturday. What? I love Saturday. Well, think back to the first Easter. I have a feeling that first Easter, they didn't call it Good Friday. 
See, we have the benefit to know after Friday comes Resurrection Sunday. But Jesus was dead and hearts were heavy. Now for us, again, it's okay. Good Friday gives way to Resurrection Sunday, an empty tomb, faith rising, joy, relief, and victory. But hold on, what about Saturday? We never hear anything about Saturday. Some may have held on to the promise, but it looked nothing like the promise on Saturday. The stone laid heavy. Jesus' body lay cold in the grave. No sign of life in the natural world. The crowds had all left. They were on their own, wondering what to believe, where to go. What were these followers who tried to remain faithful thinking on Saturday? Have you been there? Where your natural eyes can only see defeat. I've been pastoring a long time, and even in the midst of the joy we feel, I know this room is filled with people dealing with a Saturday. Where you're desperately trying to hold on to a promise that looks like it's died. Well, if Christ is to live through us, like the Bible said, we must understand that Jesus was the Lamb of God that was slain, but now the King of all the earth has risen again on the third day, and now he's the Lion of Judah. Somebody shout amen to that. He's the Lion of Judah. And if I'm to overcome on my Saturday, I have to learn to roar like the Lion of Judah did when he rose from the grave through resurrection power because my Bible says the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me. And I got to tap into that on my Saturday or I'll stay there forever. It'll be like Groundhog Day. I'll keep living it and living it and living it. But if I let the Lion of Judah roar in me, my Sunday's coming. Somebody shout hallelujah to that. So we got to get that today. We got to get it. Church, are you ready to roar so loud that it takes you all the way from Saturday to Resurrection Sunday in your life? I want you to say this after me. My Jesus is now the Lion of Judah. Hallelujah. The scripture calls Jesus the Lion of Judah because of the authority he walks in because of the power that flows through him. But there's another reason that we've got to catch today if we're in a Saturday season. They call him the Lion of Judah because of the vision he can see with. When we are in a Saturday season, we are trying to find faith in the midst of a natural circumstance that is so bad, there's nothing to inspire us by our natural eyes. There's nothing to feed or stir our faith in that season. There are no signs that a resurrection Sunday is around the corner. We need the ability to catch a vision of victory. We need to see a purpose in our pain that others cannot see. In Corinthians 14, Paul describes his Saturday season. He says, I was perplexed. I was persecuted. I literally felt the body of the death of Jesus upon me, he says. But thank God, Paul says, I still see a resurrection Sunday coming through. I see it in my spirit. He said, you know what, sometimes you got to prophesy to yourself. And Paul said, yeah, I'm persecuted, but let me tell you something, I'm not abandoned. It's okay to recognize your season is hard, but don't you leave it there because there's nothing that has you bound that my Jesus cannot set you free from this morning. There's no season he can't deliver me out of. We've seen him do it. I'm persecuted, but I'm not abandoned. I'm struck down, but I'll tell you what, I'm not destroyed, Paul says. I need a vision with my spiritual eyes different than what I'm seeing with my natural eyes. I need to see through the lion of Judah's eyes. And he says it in Corinthians 4, 16. Paul says, therefore, I do not give up. Even though my outer person is being destroyed and my inner person is being renewed day by day. And I love the way he taunts his trials. He calls them a momentary light affliction. Come on, y'all. He says, compared to what God's doing inside of me through this trial, it's worth it. Because it's creating a weight of glory in the end. The word focus, and when he says, so do not focus on what is seen, but what is unseen, many translations call it a gaze, a gaze. Jesus is the Lion of Judah. 
and we are his followers. What makes him the Lion of Judah is he is a king. All things in any moment, he can see things that others can't see. He can see what the Father's doing, where the Father's taking him. It is the reason that he could say those things we talked about because the Lion of Judah can see things we can't see this morning. Look at those eyes. There's something about a lion's eyes. Do you know a lion can see six times further than a human being? If they stood on a mountain and you looked out at the dusk of dark, you could maybe see one mile. He can see six miles. Because light comes in your pupil and it comes out your cornea. And God gifted the lion with eyes. You, you ever seen a baseball player put that black stuff under their eyes? That's to re reflect light. God made the lion with white strips under his eyes to draw in all the light in the midst of darkness so he can see further. He doesn't just see the momentary struggles. He sees the resurrection Sunday. And you know what? We can have that vision from God. We can have that and see further. You know what gets you through your Saturday? Having the vision of the Lion of Judah, letting the Spirit of God draw light into the midst of your darkness, seeing past what's right in front of you, gazing into your future beyond the momentary darkness. And this Easter, do not just walk through what you're walking through strictly with the eyes of your soul and your emotions. Look past the circumstance with the eyes of the Lion. And you know what you're going to see? Resurrection Sunday is on the way. Because when you start seeing with the eyes of the Lion of Judah, you'll see that God is training you for a trial that hasn't even started yet. He's preparing you for a purpose that hasn't even started yet. He's saying to you in faith, learn to eat before you're hungry, church. Learn to drink before you're thirsty for what lies ahead. He's saying, lean into me on Saturday and see through the darkness. I know you're hurting, and hurting still hurts with hope, but there's a resurrection day coming in your life. Because of what you've been through on Friday and Saturday, remember this though, don't ever try to go back to Thursday. Some things you go through in life, you can't go back to be what you used to be, and that's a good thing. Because you gotta embrace the new, you gotta embrace being a new creature. You, got, you gotta catch what it means to be a new creation in Christ. Because everything you walk through is meant to shape you more into the image of Jesus. He's trying to take you to a new place in the future. You will experience resurrection power today. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead and created that empty tomb. But we never are the same after we walk through certain things. Now I want to conclude before we come to the Lord's table as we end the service and just read you from the scriptures. What happened on Sunday? We made it through Friday. They made it through Saturday. And Sunday comes an empty tomb. Somebody shout hallelujah to that. My God is alive. Buddha's still in the grave. Muhammad's still in the grave. Jesus is alive. Our Jesus. In Matthew 28, here's what happened. It says, after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel. The Lord came from heaven. And going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning. His clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him, they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, don't be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was, everybody say past tense, <laughs> crucified. But he's not here now. He's risen just like he told you. Come and see the place where he lay. So they quickly, and then quickly go tell his disciples, he is risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him now, I've told you. Now while the women were on the way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priest everything that happened. You know the devil is a liar. And he's always trying to lie about my Jesus. You know why? Because he knows the real Jesus still changes lives. He knows that everybody needs a Savior. And he knows he's powerless to stop the Lion of Judah, so he has to use deception. And he does it right here. 
It says with the chief priests had met the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are not to say to his disciples came during the night. You're, you're to say that his disciples came during the night and stole him away while you were asleep. How silly to think that could stop the resurrected Jesus. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and you can go out of your trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. The story has been widely circulated even among the Jews to this very day. Then the disciples went to the mountain where Jesus told them to go, where they saw him and they worshiped him, but some still doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, and this is a word for us today, as we come to the Lord's table, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. Yes, Jesus was the spotless lamb that was slain to take away the sin of the world. And we celebrate that today. We have come here to thank him for what he did for us, dying in our place. But today we also celebrate, thank God, now the risen Lion of Judah, our soon and coming king. And at that name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. At that name, demons tremble. At that name is all authority that has been given to us by the Lion of Judah himself, Jesus, to go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to obey everything that Jesus taught. And he's with us always. The Lion of Judah lives in you through the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you're in a Saturday season waiting on a Resurrection Sunday, remember this today, run to your battle. Don't run away from it. Get rid of those fig leaves. They don't work. Let Jesus wash your sin this morning. Run to your battle. Run to Jesus. Everybody's got stuff they need to put under the blood of Jesus Christ this morning. If you believe it, say amen. Would you bow your heads for just a moment? Father, we come before you today thankful that we know the whole story. We know, Jesus, that you were and are the Messiah. We know that you rose on the third day and died in our place that our sins might be forgiven. So I want to ask you today as you need to do as many have done over the last several services this weekend. Many did Friday night at our family time. This is your day to come to the cross. Do you need to ask Jesus to be your Savior, your Lord this morning? Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt if you were to die today, you would go to heaven? You do not go to heaven by joining a church. You do not go to heaven by living a good enough life. Those things will help get you reward in heaven, but they will not get you entrance into heaven. The only thing that will give you entrance into heaven is one simple thing, accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. The Bible says, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he is the Son of God and you shall be saved. And I want to give you that opportunity right now. And Maybe you're here today in Easter 2023 and you say, I need to recommit my life to Jesus Christ. I need to recommit to him. I am distant from him. My pilot light is either out or it's barely flickering in my spirit. I don't really pray anymore. I don't serve anymore. I, I, I may take on the name of a follower of Jesus, but my relationship is dormant. Today's the day to recommit to him. Recommit your life to him. He has glorious things for you. Put aside your fig leaves and come let the blood of Jesus cover your mistakes this morning, once and for all. If that's you, I believe your heart's beating a little quicker right now. The Holy Spirit's knocking on you. Do you need to meet Jesus? Do you need to recommit your life to him. We're all going to pray this prayer with you to stand with you this morning. And then as you pray it, you know it's you. I'm just going to ask you to lift your hand when we're done and acknowledge to God, that's me, God. Thank you for touching my life. Would everyone in the room pray this after me? Lord Jesus, come on, pray that. Lord Jesus, 
I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I ask you now to come into my heart through the Holy Spirit. Show me your love. Show me my purpose in the earth. And I receive your gift of eternal life in heaven. In Jesus' name. Now, with every head bowed, if you prayed that prayer to God and you needed to, just slip your hand up and wave it at me very quickly. Come on, several hands in the air. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise God. Thank you, thank you. God, we thank you for the gift of salvation as we come to your table this morning. I'm going to ask that you go ahead and stand to your feet. And I'm going to pray one more prayer. If you're with me, say amen. God is nowhere near done. This is the most important time. We're getting ready to come to the Lord's table. We're going to show a video in just a second. That's going to allow the servers to get in place. But would you bow your head one more time? I just, are you in a Saturday season in some part of your life this morning? Are you battling something? Something that's heavy. You're looking for that resurrection Sunday but it hadn't come yet and you say pastor I need the lot the eyes of the lion of Judah this morning I need to see past what's got me beat down this relationship issue this financial issue this issue with my health this issue in my past that I can't seem to let go whatever it is if you're in a Saturday season I want you to lift your hand as a point of contact to God right now come on don't be shy and I'm going to pray for all of us. God, you see many hands in the air right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray you gently and lovingly go and fill their heart with fresh faith. I pray you'd fill them with the eyes of the Lion of Judah that they can see past now what they're battling every day. God, and even as we celebrate today, we know that there are real life issues coming at us on Monday but God we're not going to respond the same way Monday because of what happened to us on Resurrection Sunday and we just declare that this morning that God is touching his people right now receive it by faith in Jesus name if you believe it say amen can you give God some praise in here this morning for all he's doing hallelujah thank you Lord